most dangerous weather phenomenon many of us will ever experience. My tongue started sizzling. And also the one we're most likely to encounter. I thought this is what it's like to die from being hit by lightning. In the United States, it's the second most frequent storm-related killer. In the United States, on average, about 100 people are killed by lightning each year. This powerful force of nature strikes our homes, our forests, our cities. Nothing is safe. any given moment, 2,000 thunderstorms unleash their energy. A few last more than a couple of hours, but in that time, they can turn a gentle river into a raging torrent. Hail can damage crops and property. And then there's lightning one of the deadliest products of a thunderstorm. The world is hit by more than eight and a half million strikes of lightning every day. Few places on Earth are free of lightning. It can start fires and trigger explosions. Lightning is an extraordinary part of our weather system, reaching temperatures that are unimaginable. Three times hotter than the surface of the sun. A cloud to ground flash, and in an instant, it's powerful enough to light up over 13 million light bulbs. It's like a river of electricity rushing through a ravine of air. And almost nothing can stand in its way. Not even a rocket. Oh, the rocket just got hit. Florida is home for the American space industry. It's also a favorite destination for lightning. It has the right kind of weather for thunderstorms, heat, and humidity. On average, every square mile of Florida gets hit over 20 times a year, which makes it difficult if you're in the space business. November 14, 1969, the eyes of the world were on Florida as Apollo 12 was launched. It was only the second manned rocket destined to land on the moon. Three astronauts were launched into Ten, the stratosphere. Nine, eight, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running, commit, lift off. But seconds later, the rocket was struck by lightning. Some of the rocket's electronics were knocked out. America waited with bated breath, but it got back on course. They were lucky this time. Let's take a closer look at this destructive force. This generator was made by Robert Vandergrift in 1931. It simulates a flash of lightning and was originally used to research the smashing of the atom. It gives us some idea of the speed and size of lightning we see in the sky. 
And then all of a sudden, I remember uh, a blast and being knocked down. A typical flash lasts a fifth of a second. We've slowed it down by 75%. The flashes made here can produce one and a half million volts of static electricity. Stand in the path of one of these volts and you'd probably die. But real lightning that lurks in the clouds outside sparks hundreds of millions of volts of electricity. A thunderstorm is not the time to go outside and play. At that point, I, I knew that lightning was in the area, and yet I still did the dumb thing of, of going outside in it. The familiar sound of thunder, what we call thunder, is in fact the boom of lightning. One of the earliest tricks we learn is to tell how far away a storm is by counting after the flash. One, two, three. Until we hear the lightning shock waves. You see lightning almost the instant that it happens because the speed of light is so fast. You hear the thunder from lightning as a delayed reaction because the speed of sound is much slower. Count to five and the distance between you and the lightning is one mile. So why does lightning make such a sound? As it streaks through the sky, it heats up the air in its path. This makes the air expand at supersonic speed, sending shock waves through the sky, which explode with a boom. And that's the thunder. If you start counting when you see the lightning and there's no delay, then you could be in trouble. But there are early warning signs that a thunderstorm is on the way. If you know what to look for. These soccer players didn't. So what are the warning signs that a thunderstorm is on its way? Cumulus clouds are nature's biggest clue that an electrical storm could be brewing. They're born when warm, moist air at the Earth's surface is too warm relative to the cooler air above. The hot air is then forced up into the atmosphere. As the day progresses, the cauliflower-shaped pillows mature into the shape of a blacksmith's anvil. These are classic thunderclouds. They carry ice and hail particles, and they're thought to be the key element in the development of lightning. But how do these clouds manufacture lightning? Benjamin Franklin was one of the first to discover that it was electricity in the clouds that held the answer. On a blustery day in 1752, he flew a kite attached to a piece of wire into a thunderstorm. A key was tied to the bottom of the kite string. When the kite flew into the storm clouds, Franklin touched the key and sparks of electricity jumped from it. Franklin had confirmed there was electricity in the clouds, but he didn't know how it was made. Now we know it's an electrical reaction between ice, small hail, and water drops. As air rushes up and down inside a thundercloud, it makes the water droplets and ice particles inside the cloud crash into each other. All that bumping and clashing builds up a store of static electricity. And the flash of lightning we see in a storm is just that, a giant spark of static electricity. We need to be able to anticipate that. Because when lightning and man collide, the consequences are damaging and can be fatal. Life-shattering bolts from the skies aren't rare. 
Some scientists estimate that around the world at least one person is killed on average every day. During our lifetime, we have about a one in 3,000 chance of being struck. And it really can happen anywhere, especially outdoors. 50,000 people were at this concert in the United States in 1998 when a severe thunderstorm swept in. A bolt of lightning cracked concrete in the stadium and several members of the audience were hospitalized. And look what happened at this soccer game in South Africa. Thankfully, none of the players were killed. Lightning can be described by its appearance. Lightning which hits the earth is commonly called forked lightning. It always takes the easiest route to the ground. This often means the quickest. It seems lightning's favorite targets are tall buildings. They can be the first objects lightning comes across in its journey to the ground. Every year, the Empire State Building, which towers over much of New York, is hit about a hundred times. But because it was built like a giant lightning rod, it hasn't been damaged. Lightning rods are made of metal, so in the first instance, they act somewhat like a magnet, luring the lightning to strike them rather than the building. Metal provides a quick and easy route for the lightning. Electricity flows easily through the atoms in metal. It's an excellent conductor or carrier of electricity. So a metal lightning rod guides a destructive force into the ground. Once there, it dissipates and it loses all its electrical charge. But how does a cloud to ground lightning strike actually come about? A thundercloud contains concentrated areas of negative and positive charge. On its own, each area is just like half a battery. It has to find the other half of the battery to complete the circuit and make lightning. Sometimes a negative charge leaves the cloud and forges a path to the earth, sending out a strike which we can't usually see called a step leader. As the step leader with its negative charge comes down from the cloud, a positive charge reaches up from the ground and they're inevitably attracted to each other just like magnets. If we could see the positive charge on the ground, we'd be much more aware of our vulnerability. And it wouldn't be just on us. When a thundercloud is directly above, positive charge is reaching out from buildings, cars, trees, pylons. In theory, anything under the step leader could make the connection. In practice, it goes for what it's most attracted to. Usually the nearest and most welcoming targets like tall objects and metal. Once a connection is made, lightning then lights up the sky. What we actually see is the return stroke of lightning as it travels from the ground to the cloud. And lightning isn't just one flash. Usually it flashes back and forth up to 30 times in the space of one strike, which is why it appears to flicker. Look closely and you can see many flashes. It's moving at an incredible speed up to 360,000 miles per hour. It forks and branches as it searches out a connection. Unlike metal, air is a bad conductor of electricity. This means lightning has to force its way through, trying to find the path of least resistance, which is why lightning forks and zigzags. It's cloud-to-ground lightning that's to blame when people and objects are struck here on Earth.
with the most unusual the effect. It hit the back, my tongue started sizzling. The bolt of lightning struck me in the left temple, went through my entire body, came out my feet. There's no way you can prepare yourself for being hit by lightning. At the same split second, it hit the back door. My tongue started sizzling. If you're hit by lightning and your skin is moist, the moisture turns rapidly to steam and can blow away your clothes and shoes. And I said, God, my feet are killing me. And I said, these are new flats. And I sat down and I looked at them. Both heels were blown out. They were melted and there's an exit point. In 1999, two young women were found dead sitting under a tree in an English park, but they seemed to have no injuries. They'd been hit by lightning, and when the coroner examined the bodies, he discovered burn marks across their chest. Their bras were underwired with metal, and that was a path the lightning had taken. When he was a boy, this man made the mistake of touching metal during a storm. He was leaning up against a fence when the lightning struck. Lightning hit about a quarter mile up the fence line. The fence was metal, and his fingers that had been touching the wire were burned. The tips of these three fingers right here would like you put your hand on a stove, but it was, it was real, real hot. He suffered an electric shock. The power from the lightning had carried easily along the metal. A swimming pool is also high on Lightning's all-time list of favorites. First, there's water, which is another good conductor of electricity. The minerals found in water have a metallic base, which makes it easy for the Lightning to pass through. And if that isn't enough, the bottom of pools are often reinforced with rods, metal rods. But of course, our bodies are also made up of mostly water and minerals. So if we ignore the signs and carry on swimming during a thunderstorm, what chance can we possibly have? If lightning strikes nearby, the answer is almost none. If people are in the water with heads just above the surface, then like a circling shark, that's where lightning will prefer to strike. We don't know if anyone has ever survived a direct strike. And lightning doesn't necessarily take out its victims one at a time. If lightning strikes a swimming pool, everyone's at risk. It electrifies the water, which then carries its killer charge in all directions, taking out whoever's in its path. Another look at the soccer players. Lightning has spread its tentacles across the ground. If the ground is wet, its lethal charge could be carried as much as 330 feet. None of the players were killed. And it's a fact that more men are struck by lightning than women. And quite often, it's sport and outdoor work that are to blame. Men spend much more time out in the open. There are tales of some lucky escapes. The bolt of lightning struck me in the left temple, went through my entire body, came out my feet, blew both shoes 15 foot to either side, and the residual uh, 
bolt actually knocked down the catcher, the batter, shortstop, second baseman. Everybody on the field was uh, flat on their backs. In the U.S., 84% of lightning victims are men. They're usually struck on Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday afternoons. All traditional times for men to sneak away and fish and play golf. These two sports hold the record when it comes to lightning strikes. Most golf courses are only too aware of the danger. Many have installed detection systems so they can get players off the greens in time. Golf is the most popular sport in the states for middle-aged men. And there are about five deaths a year caused by lightning. And then just a bright light and it just knocked me right off my feet. As we know, this man has already been zapped by lightning. When he was 12 years old, he'd been touching a metal wire fence. Then he took up golf. For him, it was a big mistake. I thought this is what it's like to die from being hit by lightning. This man knows what it's like to be hit by lightning as a child. Then he took up golf and made a second date with fate. On this day, he and his golfing partners had reached the 15th hole. The clouds were getting ominous, you know, off in the distance. It was probably six or seven miles away from us. He'd learned something from his previous experience. And I told my friend, I said, let's, let's get out of here. We need to get out of here before the weather gets bad. But not enough. I thought this is what it's like to die from being hit by lightning. The big boom. After the flash had hit me, I blacked out and I fell across my golf bag. Well, I really thought my legs had been blown off. I just was paralyzed from uh, mid-chest all the way down and I couldn't feel anything, but uh, I wasn't really upset. What else might happen, I was just alive. Quinn has no lasting injuries, but not everyone is so fortunate. Can we physically sense when lightning has singled us out? If you're under a thundercloud and your hair starts to prickle and stand on end, then you know it's attracted to you like a bead of honey. That's when you're at your most vulnerable and when it's almost too late. So what are your chances? Lightning kills 10 to 20% of the people that it attacks. It's like an enormous electric shock. If the current which powers a light bulb can kill, think what lightning can do. It's up to a thousand times more powerful. And if it doesn't kill, it can badly injure. When lightning strikes, it can send the body into spasms so violent that it can damage internal organs. The heat from a lightning strike flashes over the body in milliseconds, long enough to cause multiple burns. Most people die because the rhythm of the heart is stopped. It's estimated that three out of four survivors will have long-term injuries like paralysis and brain damage. So can we ever be safe? There are a few simple rules. If you're caught in the middle of a thunderstorm, avoid anything metal. Remember the women in the English park and never stand under a tall tree, particularly if it's on its own. Trees are like tall buildings and mountaintops. They're most at risk. Look at this decimated herd of elk in Colorado. Sometimes hundreds of livestock can die in one thunderstorm. 
but most human deaths by lightning happen either on water, under trees, or in open fields. If you're caught outside in an open space, crouch down low on the balls of your feet. This way, you're less of a target. If your car is made of metal, that's where you should be. It's the second safest place during a thunderstorm. Rubber may be an insulator, but the car tires won't save you. They'd need to be a mile thick to be effective. You're being saved by what's called the Faraday Principle. This is a Faraday cage. It's made of metal and lightning is being directed straight at it. You might think the man inside would be in danger. Watch what happens. He doesn't get struck. The lightning hits the cage and travels over the metal like a skin. Because in this case, electricity prefers to sit on the outer surface. It cannot penetrate. So a car is just one big Faraday cage. On a busy American highway, this car was hit by lightning. It struck the aerial and then invaded the electrical system. We saw a big burst of flame in the front. It hit the antenna and it looked like it exploded from the hood after it hit. I didn't know what happened. I got a, a signal that my front headlights were out and smoke started to fill the car and people were yelling at me to get out of the car. The driver was safe, shielded by the shell of the car, acting like a protective cover of skin. But there is one place safer than a car in lightning. There's no place like home. This is the safest place to be during a thunderstorm. However, there are no guarantees. In the US, Lightning is one of the greatest natural destroyers of property. Every year, 30,000 homes and buildings are destroyed. Averaged out, that's 82 a day. In June 2000, this apartment complex in Tampa, Florida took its second hit of lightning in two weeks. Fire wrecked the building. Chimneys, television aerials, roofs are all potential lightning targets. Lightning can also send a killer charge through the telephone line. In July um, 1989, I was at my antique store. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon. I was getting ready to close. A customer called, wanting me to sell some things for her. I heard a loud noise, kind of like a boom after the crackling. Susan had been hit by lightning. I actually thought I'd been shot. I mean, basically, it sounded like a gunshot. That's the sound that I heard. It was just a very loud noise. Using a corded telephone during a thunderstorm is dangerous because lightning may hit the telephone lines outside, travel into your house, and into your telephone headset. Every year in the U.S., somebody is killed while they're on a corded phone during a storm. And it can destroy equipment like computers and televisions. Once it's in the electrical system, it can devour every appliance that's plugged in. And it can get you in the shower, bath, or sink because metal pipes and water can carry lightning's destructive charge. All these systems are made of materials that conduct electricity, providing easy paths for lightning. At a building site in Arizona, lightning entered through this tiny hole. The average width of a lightning bolt is the size of a quarter. This bolt killed one of the builders sheltering inside. So much energy comes down, uh, it has to find a ground, and that ground is a nail that's into the concrete in the floor, and his foot is on that nail. So it comes down, he receives a wound to the head, to the chest, and then an exit wound out the left foot.
But what happens if a plane flies into the path of lightning? Over 30 million plane journeys are made every year, and not one of those aircraft escapes the lightning. In 1963, a Boeing 707 exploded in the sky while waiting for clearance to land in Philadelphia. There was a flash of lightning followed by two explosions. The fuel tank had taken a direct hit. All 81 people aboard were killed. Fortunately, if a plane is hit today, the results aren't likely to be devastating. They're built to fend off attacks from lightning. The Faraday principle that applies to cars also applies to planes. They're protected by the encompassing skin of the aircraft. That's the aluminum exterior. Before a new design of plane is allowed to fly, it's zapped to make sure it's lightning safe. This laboratory creates its own version of natural lightning. An aircraft panel usually found on the wing is about to be struck. So what is the result? Do we have a melt through completely through? Okay. It doesn't pass the test. The lightning has burned straight through. When a plane flies through a thundercloud, its metal skin makes it an attractive target. The lightning strikes at one extremity, either the wing, the nose, or tail, travels across the body, and then leaves by another. Planes are generally safe but there's always a chance that lightning could find a chink in the plane's armor. Everything is at risk from lightning. Even our power lines, they're tall, made of metal, and strung with wires, the perfect prey. They provide the ideal opportunity for lightning to black out cities. In one foul swoop, lightning could invade the whole power system, causing it to overload and fail. New York City, 1977, four lightning strikes hit, one after the other in a space of an hour. As each strike hit different sections of the power system, the city ground to a halt, even the subway. Yeah, How long were you stuck for? About 45 minutes. The lightning had targeted crucial transmission lines between substations. It was like a military attack. The city was in chaos. Looting broke out and central New York came to a standstill. Even Wall Street closed down. It took 25 hours to get the city back up and running. But that was in the 70s. Technology has moved on. And although we can't stop lightning from striking power lines, the damage can usually be limited. Surge arresters, these metal coils, absorb the shock when lightning strikes. They divert the lightning into the ground. Then only a few houses may lose electricity instead of whole cities. But there's not much that can be done if lightning strikes in woodland. It can completely demolish the oldest, toughest tree and the heat of the strike can make the sap expand and blast the bark off the trunk. But it can also be sneaky, 
Lightning can inject heat inside a tree, which can then smolder for more than a week, or even up to a month before it ignites. There is much about lightning we still don't know. It was only in 1989 that scientists found evidence of yet another form of lightning. These are bizarre red sprites and blue jet. They live in the atmosphere where it's usually too high for planes and too low for satellites. The University of Alaska took this little seen footage from specially equipped planes. Blue jets move up to 60 miles a second. They shoot up from the top of a thunderstorm at the same moment lightning discharges within a thundercloud. Travel higher and you'll bump into these, sprites. They also appear above thunderstorms and seem to coincide with regular lightning. These alien forms of lightning are bright red with blue hanging tendrils, and they're not solitary, they travel in groups. Scientists are still speculating about their energy and their destructive powers. But there's one other extraordinary form of lightning that they don't know much about, and this one's found on Earth. Ball lightning is one of the great mysteries of the natural world. Its existence has been reported as far back as the Middle Ages. This footage was taken in northern India in the summer of 2002. It had been unusually hot and dry with fast scorching winds during the day. Between June and August, this bizarre phenomenon reportedly appeared at night throughout the region. It was seen by hundreds of people, just smaller than a football. It moved up and down a few feet above the ground, omitting a low hissing sound and radiating heat. No one really knows why ball lightning occurs. One theory is that it's nothing more than burning particles of silicon. When ordinary forked lightning hits the ground, the soil can be heated to high temperatures so that it vaporizes. It's thought that once the bolt has hit the earth, vapor erupts and can appear above the ground in the form of a ball. But because ball lightning can as yet be replicated in the laboratory, it still occupies the world of the great unknown, which for now is where it will have to stay. In Florida, regular lightning gives scientists enough to worry about. Not only is it America's lightning capital, but it's home to NASA. In the 60s, NASA got its lightning wake-up call with Apollo 12. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. T-minus 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two. Main engine start, zero, and liftoff. The Kennedy Space Center is the size of Manhattan and a paradise for lightning. 11 metal launch pads, water, big open spaces, sophisticated telephone systems. It's overflowing with electrical equipment and buildings full of compressed gases and fuel. NASA throws everything at detection and prediction. They track electricity in the clouds and measure electrical fields on the ground. When a launch is scheduled, the NASA weather team plays a crucial part. They're on the lookout for lightning just a hint of even small electrical fields in the clouds and liftoff is aborted. 
In 1987, the unmanned Atlas Centaur rocket was struck by lightning 49 seconds after liftoff. With the fleet six. Vehicle has cleared the tower. Light uh, proceeding very normally. Slight attitude disturbances. The navigation system was fried and it went careering off course. We have lost telemetry. We don't know quite why yet. We have no data. No telemetry data from any source at Hangar AE. NASA was forced to detonate the rocket. The weather team had made a bad call. The rocket had gone into the clouds and made its own lightning. The spacecraft itself had been the vital connection between the electrically charged parts of the clouds. One millisecond, the rocket triggered lightning had wiped out millions of dollars and years of planning. Today, we understand how nature creates cloud to ground lightning. But there's still much that baffles scientists. It remains a mystery exactly how lightning builds up and discharges in the sky. Lightning is nature's own fireworks show. Exciting, but a killer. So powerful we can never tamper with its strength. Like a bullet from the sky, it strikes. Unpreventable. And deadly.